Hi, Chewy here in uh, the parking lot. I've got my 20% off coupon right here. Let's go buy some power tools. Did you want to get the extended warranty case? 2023. So there you go, Harbot Freight. Uh, $20.23 out the door after tax. Brilliant. Now, if only they would give us the sponsorship. You know, Harbot Freight. Okay, so we just got back from the discount tool store with our bounty of fabulous, inexpensive cordless drills. Now, let's take the thing to bits. Uh, the tools you'll need will be a, a number two a Phillips screwdriver. I like to keep a pair of clippers handy. And then, of course, I will be funny and use another drill to dismantle the drill. And to that, I have a number two kit in here. So, let's see what's inside the box. And just dump it all out, because that's more gooder. Alright, so we have instruction manual that we will not use. We have the drill body and the 18 volt NICAD battery. You can see it's rated 18 volts, 1.3 amp hours. Uh, that's questionable at best, but maybe good stuff. Inside the box here is the charging unit. It comes with a uh, nice little switch mode power supply. I believe it's 24 volts at uh, 0.3 amps. And this little charging cradle, it's uh, a vast improvement over the previous model and does appear to actually be somewhat intelligent. More on that later as well. But now to the meat and potatoes of this, let's crack open this drill. So step one is to take the chuck off. This is much easier now while it's still in the drill body than it is later. Um, in addition, I have found that this is really only difficult to get the chuck off when the drill is used, you know, for making holes and, and driving screws. Uh, when it's new, they almost fall right off. So, first step is to open up the drill chuck as big as it'll go, dial up the clutch, and if you can see in there, there is a Phillips screw. Now this is a left-handed thread 5 millimeter. So in order to get this screw out, we'll take our number two screwdriver, make sure it's seated really well in there, because you do not want to strip this screw out. They are difficult to acquire uh, extras if needed. So uh, we're going to uh, turn the screwdriver as though we are tightening the screw. And of course, it is being uncooperative. Okay, let's use the battery. We'll use the battery to assist. There we go. All right. So now we will turn in a clockwise fashion. The screw is loose and falls right out. You can see there's oh, a nice little glob of grease on there, but left-handed 5 millimeter. Okay, now that the chuck screw is removed, the chuck should just thread off the spindle. And it's a conventional thread, or uh, you would turn it anti-clockwise, looking at the drill chuck, to remove it. So let's try that. Yeah, there we go. Easy peasy. Comes right off. So this drill chuck is, oh, that's incredibly chewy and crappy, but eh, we're basically not going to use this, although it's very handy as a tap wrench or pin vise. It's held together by a bunch of Phillips screws, and we'll just use our handy hyperfray drill to remove those. There are one or two screws that are recessed down in there far enough where you have to use the regular screwdriver to get them out. So that's that one, and that one. Pops right open. You have the battery connector, 
you have this uh, self-contained speed control slash uh, forward reverse switch. The uh, motor and gearbox combination with the clutch intact. This is the part that we're really after today. So I will take my nippers and just sever these wires. There we go. Now we'll take apart the clutch. So in order to dismantle this particular one, it's these three screws on the front. Okay, so those three screws back out. This little decorative plate kind of pops off. And you have this metal plate with two more screws. Now we'll take those out. So this whole assembly is kind of spring-loaded. Take off the uh, adjuster thing. There is this die type spring which compresses these ball bearings. We'll just dump those out. Okay, so we have just defeated the clutch mechanism in the drill. So you can see the shaft just freely spins now. That is the process of harvesting the drill motors themselves and the transmission. Uh, in the next installment, uh, I'll demonstrate how to uh, disassemble this, uh, tap out these holes for set screws to lock the clutch, and prep it with uh, leads and a capacitor. How to remove a chuck if it's being difficult, like if you have a used drill, for example. So the two methods that I know of for doing this are, number one, you get a big Allen wrench, as big as will fit in the chuck, put it in there, put the drill into gear, it doesn't really matter which gear, forward or reverse, and then you whack it with a hammer. Method number two, uh, you put the battery on the drill, you put the chuck key in the chuck, and you spin it, and then you uh, introduce this end into something heavy like a piece of metal or wood. So, this is probably a little less safe, but hey, it's more fun, right? There you go. Dismantle!